Howdy and welcome to the Confidence Through Health podcast. I'm Jerry Snyder. As an elite level athlete, owner of All In Health and Wellness, and author of the book Confidence Through Health, my goal is to help you achieve your goals and dreams using health as the conduit to get there. So I want to take a second to thank our sponsor for this episode, American Sports and Fitness Association. They are the place to go for your personal trainer and fitness certifications. They have a wide range of certifications, everything from personal trainer to golf fitness instructor to water aerobics to nutrition and sports nutrition. Uh, If you've been thinking about going into uh, sports and fitness instructor uh, arena, I highly suggest you check out the American Sports and Fitness Association there's a link on, our, on my website, confidencethroughhealth.com. Go there to look at other episodes of the website, but also check out uh, their information. Uh, it'll link to their website, and you can check out more information about how to get certified as a sports and fitness instructor. Howdy, and welcome back to the Confidence Through Health podcast. This is Jerry Snyder, your host, and this is episode number 105. I want to talk about nutritional values, uh, specifically how to read nutritional labels and how misleading that is, how confusing it is, and maybe how to make it a little bit easier. And so one of the things that is most confusing is the actual daily percent of, you know, something that you need based on a 2000 calorie diet. And then the serving size, you have to look at multiple things and it can be confusing because you could get a box or a bag of something that is say six servings based on the serving size calculation. And you look at it and you go, I, I, I usually eat that in two meals or my family eats that in one meal, that, that bag that six servings, my family of four will go through that in one meal. And so then you have to figure out, well, if it's based on a 2000 calorie diet, which is a random number, really. I mean, I know that there's been a lot of science put into that number and it's, it's, it's an old number that we use. Uh, it's not accurate um, because there's so many factors that go into what, what calories are good for you and what calories are not good for you. That's a whole other podcast I could talk about. But what you need to do is figure out how many calories you need. How many calories you need. And a calorie, if you didn't know, is a measurement of energy created by something. So you eat something, it gets consumed in the offput or the output of the process of it being consumed and burned is a calorie, it's energy. And then your body uses that energy to then do its thing, move around, cells that work, operate, all of that stuff. So there's a lot of formulas as to how many calories you need to just basically live. It's your basic metabolic rate. How many calories you need to, you know, run two miles, play a game of basketball, you know, sit at your desk and work on the computer, uh, vacuum the floor. Like there's a lot of different calculations that have been made. But in today's world, at least in Western society, in today's world to say that everybody needs to live off a 2000 calorie diet is so far outdated information. So what you need to do is you need to worry about where your calories coming from. And the biggest key to that is understanding how to read the nutritional label. And I'm not talking about where they're coming from as far as are they coming from plants or meat or any of that kind of thing. Where are they coming from as far as the nutrition that's in whatever it is you're eating? And understanding how to read those labels is key to knowing, are you putting the right things in your body? So if a calorie, if a, if a label says, you know, per six servings, or, or per serving and this, this, this box has six servings in it. So that's, you know, that means one sixth of the box is one serving. So you have to look at it and go, do I eat two 
servings? Do I eat three servings? Do I eat four servings out of this box? And I'll be honest with you, there's things that I eat where I'll look at it and it says serving size, you know, is, is this amount? And I'm like, well, geez, I eat like five servings in one sitting of that item. So I've got to do the math in whatever is on the back. And so if it says that it's, you know, fiber and it's 15% of your daily vitamin, daily value off a 2000 calorie diet. Well, if you're supposed to eat 2000 calories, then, and you're eating five servings of that in one sitting, guess what? You're eating almost a hundred percent of your fiber from that one item in one sitting. So it's important to know all those pieces and put them all together. The bigger key, I think, is to understand how they all interact together. And so if you're understanding, forget about the percent. If you're understanding that you need this many carbohydrates and this many fat and this many protein and this many fiber, those are the four main that are on the, the, the nutritional label. The key is to understand how many grams of each one of those you need. And I know grams is one of those things that we don't typically use. We use ounces and pounds in the U S right. Understand how to use grams. You don't, it's, it's not that hard, but look at it and go, okay, well, it's got more grams of, you know, say fat than it does of fiber. Well, if that's the case, that's not going to be necessarily a healthy thing for you, for most Americans, for most humans. It's okay to have fat. You need fat. You need carbohydrates. You need protein. You need fat. You need fiber. You need all of those. But it's understanding to get them in the proper portions. So if you go on a low fat diet, you're not going to be super successful for a long term. You go on a low protein diet, you're probably not going to be super successful for a long term. And I mean low, I'm talking about like zero to five grams, like zero to 10 grams you're into that range, like your body needs these items. Okay. Most of these items, you don't have to go seeking out. You're going to consume them. They're going to be part of normal food that you eat. If you eat a healthy diet, if you eat a plant-based diet, you're going to get protein because there's protein in plants. The legumes have protein. You're going to get protein. If you have a variety, if you just sit there like anything else, if all you do is eat chicken nuggets, well, you're not going to have a balanced diet. If all you do is eat black eyed peas, you're not going to have a balanced diet. You have to have a variety. In most cases, most diets, what we, what we consume because of the way that our food is processed, even the things that are just like, you would think, well, that's not processed. It's a pinto bean. It's in a bag of pinto beans. How is that processed? It still goes through the processing from the ground through the farming system. So unless you're buying it from a local farmer who's doing things the old fashioned way, there's some processing piece to everything that you eat. So you have to be aware of that from a nutritional standpoint in making sure that you've got a variety because a variety is hugely important. And when I say variety, I'm talking about from a plant and plant based side of things, vegetables, fruits, legumes, everything that comes from plants. You're talking somewhere in the, in the, in the range of 30 to 50 different varieties of plants a week. That can be tough. What you have to do is you have to look at the serving size of things. And you have to understand when you're purchasing things that I can't buy this, especially if you live by yourself. It's, I know it, it's, it's, it's a little difficult, but you can't buy this huge item that's going to go out of you know date. It's going gonna, it's gonna to rot before, like if you buy a huge watermelon, it's going to rot before you have a chance to eat it unless that's all you eat. If you're in a bigger family, it's a little bit easier. 
but I understand the difficulty. And so you have to, under, you have to look at the serving size. You have to understand what the serving size is and you need to know for you and each person can be a little bit different in this aspect. You can't just put a blanket statement out there and say, everybody needs X amount of carbohydrates. Everybody needs X amount of fat. It's different. It's not a lot different, but it is different per person because you've got a different genetic makeup. You've got a different background. Your gut microbiome has different bacteria in it. And so there's, there's a variety of reasons why you need to make sure that you understand how it works best for you. The only way to find out for, there's a couple, I mean, obviously you can go get tested and see like what your gut is doing. And you can spend a lot of money on all these tests to find out, you know, what, the lab is going to tell you is the best way to go, or you can just try it out for a week at a time on different. And I recommend plant-based meal plans. So when I say plant-based, I'm talking about 80% plants, 80, 80 or more percent plants in the meals that you're eating. So if you do that and you're looking at serving sizes and you're understanding that a serving size of fish is actually fairly small. A serving size of steak is actually fairly small. We have this, this crazy, abundant, overabundant like mindset in America that we have to eat half a cow at a meal. Like we don't need steaks that are that big you're eating way too much you're consuming way too much food a b you're consuming way too much of one type of food at one time and so it's a variety that's a hugely important piece understanding that if you're eating something that's got a nutritional label on it and you can read it and you can understand that okay well this needs to have a balance of, this is where the balanced diet comes in. It needs to have a balance of carbohydrates, fats, fiber, and protein. And if you can't find that, if you buy something that is, say, 40 grams of protein per serving, which, by the way, is a ton, and it has zero fat, zero carbs, and zero fiber, you need to mix that protein with something that has 40 grams of fiber, 40 grams, of, like you need to be pretty balanced. And I'm going to extreme on this being a, a, across the board, just 40, 40, 40, 40. That's, that's an extreme balance. Most people are not going to be that balanced, but you need to know what your levels are. And so it's not about going zero carbs. It's not about going zero fat. It's not about going zero protein and Believe me, if you don't have fiber, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it when you go to the bathroom. Uh, what you want to do is make sure that you're getting enough for you, for your body of each of those. Now, I'm going to tell you, you don't need a ton of protein. You don't need near as much as what uh, is being said to you by um, my thought is the people that are behind it all is people in the um, meat industry because they've been hit really hard in the past few, in the past years, they've been hit really hard. And so whenever there's a drought, all of a sudden you're going to hear you need to eat your meat because they need to make some money to make up for it. So protein gets, gets overblown, especially by the way, if you're not exercising, if you're not exercising and building muscle, that's what protein does. Protein's going to build muscle. That's what it's for. So if you're not exercising, then everything you eat is just going to stored fat. As, as far as protein's concerned, you must exercise if you're going to eat a high protein diet. You must exercise. And since the vast majority of Americans are not exercising, but a lot of Americans think that they don't get enough protein, 
you can just see where a big part of our issue is. And high levels of protein that are not being effectively used shows up in kidney issues, other metabolism issues, can, be show, can show up in hormone issues. So there's a lot of issues that come from not understanding how to eat properly for what you are trying to accomplish, for what you are trying to do. So if you are just trying to accomplish, I really don't care about exercise. I just wanna sit at my desk and do my work and go home and sit on the couch. And that's what I want out of life. Pay hey, more power to you then you need to eat that way. And eating that way means don't eat a lot of meat. Don't eat a lot of protein, especially protein from meat because of the hormones that are also in there. You're going to need to eat a lot of plant-based stuff. And you know what? Those two things don't seem to go together because plant-based stuff, you know what it does? It makes you want to exercise because it gets your cells what they want and it gets your cells moving. And when your cells start moving, then your body, your brain's going to say, I need to move. I need to move. I think it would be better if we exercised. So to go back to the nutrition labels, understanding that not everybody needs 2000 calorie diet. Um, I exercise myself. I exercise a ton for the average 47 year old, uh, anywhere between 30 to 55 miles per week running outside. And then on top of that is the, the, you know, the core and conditioning work that I do on myself, but I also exercise when I'm uh, training, um, you know, the athletes that I work with, I exercise a little bit there. I walk around a ton. Um, you know, I'm not a sedentary guy. And I would tell you right now that because what I eat doesn't have a lot of calories because what I eat has other nutrients in it that I need. Um, and those nutrients come in low calorie form. So your plants, your vegetables, they're low calorie, but they're high nutrient. And when you eat those, you can eat a lot of them and fill up and get the nutrients you need, get the energy you need, and stay low on calorie intake. So there's a lot of days where I don't come close to 2000 calories intake. Um, and I'm still able to do what I do. And I'm highly healthy. So to go off of this random, well, I shouldn't say random because it, it, at one point there was a formula, at one point there was, this is what you need. When most Americans were outside working on the farm or outside doing things, not sitting in their car, sitting at their desk, sitting in their car, sitting on a couch all day long. When most Americans were outside, active, doing things, yes, the 2,000 calorie diet made sense as far as starting points. But it's a starting point. It's not, it's, it's recommended. It's not necessarily the gold standard for what is going to be best for your life. It's just a basic starting point. So take, take that as a starting point, but then look, make sure you're reading all those labels. Are you getting enough of each of those four main items? Is the, the, the vitamin in, in the vitamin content, the mineral content, the nutrients, the actual nutrients in those packages that you're eating, does it have anything? Does it have enough? And again, it's going to have a percent on there. The percent is based off a 2000 calorie diet that is again, outdated when it comes to the nutrient level of what you need. And sometimes those nutrient levels on those packages are wrong because that's based on what, say, carrots used to have in them 30 or 40 years ago. Carrots now, the ground is different. They're not as nutrient dense. 
And so it's something that's going to be less than that. But a key to remember is that most of those vitamins and minerals, even though it says, you know, your, your goal is to get 100% daily value, you go get 100% of all these things, you can and should get more than that. Because your body, especially if you're unhealthy right now, and you're trying to find a starting point, overdosing on those, vest, on those vitamins and minerals is not a bad idea. Because the vast majority of them, in order to actually get to a point where you get into some sort of vitamin poisoning, mineral poisoning, you have to have a super high concentration amount of those because they're good for your body and your body, if your body doesn't need it, it's going to say, I don't need it. We're just going to get rid of it. It's a natural vitamin and mineral. It's not going to just hang around. Take something like mercury that is poisonous to our bodies that we do consume through fish that we do consume through other avenues that sticks in our body and it stays because our body doesn't know how to get rid of it. But you take say vitamin D vitamin A, vitamin C, it's really hard to get that much in your body on a constant basis unless you're taking actual concentrated pills of those vitamins and taking a ton of them every day. But through food, it's really, really hard to get that much of a concentration level of those vitamins and minerals in order to actually cause damage to your body to get to a point where you're poisoning your body from an overdose of those vitamins and minerals. So if you are trying to get hundred percent and you get to 150%, your body's just going to thank you because it's going to have a little extra and it's not going to be as hard to use those vitamins or to find those vitamins in the bloodstream because they're going to be a little bit more of them in there and that's okay. But having all those vitamins is great. Having all those nutrients is great. And that's what you should focus on. And then the third thing about the labels is the actual ingredients of something. Reading the actual ingredients and understanding what you're eating. And if you can't understand what you're eating simply by reading the ingredients, it's probably processed too much to do any good in your body. So what I mean by that is if you pick up a, a, uh, say a package of pasta And, you know, the first ingredient may be wheat. Uh, You know, the next ingredient may be salt or, you know, something else that you can read and understand. And it's, hey, that's great. But then you get into these chemical combinations where you can't read the word or you have no idea what that is because it's some chemical that you're like, I, maybe I learned about this in chemistry class, but I have no idea what it is. That's when things can go very bad for you internally because your body's probably not supposed to have that in it. Now, a lot of times these companies know that there's things that you're not supposed to have. You know, you're not supposed to have mercury. Uh, They know that you've been told you're not supposed to have sugar. They know that you've been told you're not supposed to have high fructose corn syrup. They know that you've been told you're not supposed to have highly processed oils. And so they changed the wording to the chemical base of whatever that is. And, you know, I, I, my eyes were opened a lot to this back when we adopted my daughter. Um, She's about turned 12 and she developed a corn allergy. And so there are, over a dozen different ways that companies label corn on packages. Over a dozen to just, it's a four letter word. And there's over a dozen ways that they label corn on a package because they know that processed corn is getting a bad rap. And it should get a bad rap because processed corn is not great for you, especially when they heat it, especially when they make it into corn syrup especially when they make it in the high fructose corn syrup. And so they've changed to using 
chemical names. They've changed to using other varieties of names on these items. And so chances are, if you look at something on a nutrition label, on the ingredients, and you can't pronounce it, or you think it looks too much like a chemical, chances are it's not good for you because chances are high that it's something that has been manipulated to read that way because the producer of that product knows that it's not good for you. Knows that if they just put high fructose corn syrup, you probably put that back down. So they changed the label. And of course, the other thing to look at is just how many things are in there. You know, if it's, if it's a box of cereal and so a box of cereal may have, you look at the box and you look at the, the picture, they have a picture, right? Of what's in it. You look at the picture and it may have granola and, you know, maybe some honey like dripping down onto the, the bowl of cereal. So you can go, okay, well, there's honey in that. Uh, there may have, you know, uh, some grains in the background of the bowl. So you can go, okay, well, there's, there's different kinds of grains in there. They're trying to, you know, make that point. There's oats in there. You can see that, um, you know, maybe there's some dried fruit in there. And so you go, okay, well, there's some dried fruit or some nuts and maybe some almonds in there, something like that. So you're getting all that off the picture, right? But when you look at the ingredients and you read the ingredients, if you look at the picture and you go, okay, well, it looks like there's maybe six different things in there, but you look at the ingredient list and it's like 40 different things or 30 different things or 20 different things listed on there. And they're supposed to put it all on there. So they will. And then of course, now they've got the, even the section that says, you know, contains this or that because of allergens for people that have allergies. If it looks like it only is supposed to have six things in it, and the list of ingredients is like 25 with some of those you can't read and you don't understand what they are. That should be a huge signal to you, huge red flag to you that this may not be a product that's good for your body. So just another thing to look at. So there's, there's three big things to look at. What are the four of the four great, the four bigger areas of nutrition, the, the protein, the fat, the fiber, and the carbohydrates, making sure that it's got something of all of those or that you're supplementing that meal when you put it together with something that has all of those in it. Two is, is looking at the vitamin contents and the daily value percentages and making sure that you're getting things that are getting high concentrations and high amounts of a variety of vitamins and minerals. And three is looking at the ingredient list. When you look at that ingredient list, what do you see? Can you read it? It should not be, you know, a, a word scramble where you're trying to figure out what the words are. It should not look to you like you're trying to read a different language. It should be plain and simple. You know, one of the things that I like is that if you go and get, uh, to go back to pinto beans, you go and get a bag of pinto beans and on the back it says ingredients, pinto beans. If you go and get a bag of, uh, you know, a, 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 a different variety of beans, like a 20 bean chili or something like that, but it's in the bag because the beans are still need to be cooked and soaked and all that. And you look at it and it says, you know, pinto beans, black beans, different beans, da, 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 da. but that's all it is, is beans. That should tell you something versus grabbing a box of something and going, okay, well, there's wheat and that next ingredient, I can't tell what it is. That next ingredient, okay, uh, it says milk, okay. The next ingredient, can't tell what that is. Next ingredient, don't know what that is. Next ingredient, don't know what that is. Oh, at the bottom it says main contains soy, but I don't see soy listed anywhere in there. So that must be one of those words that's listed in there. Um, so I'm not really sure how that is there. That should tell you something about it. It should tell you something about the product. Not everything in the grocery store is there to make you healthy. Not everything in a grocery store is actually something you should consume. And yes, they are selling you things that they know will make you sick. And it's not the grocery store's fault. It's not. Because quite frankly, we pay for it. And just like everything else in the world, if you stop paying for it, if you stop 
giving it attention, it will change. And so I know a lot of people have said, you know, it's, it's, it's more expensive to eat healthy. Well, if you stopped buying the things that are not good for you, you would force these companies to start mass producing the things that are good for you in a cheaper way. I fully believe that hundred percent because there's a lot of things that are made. There's a lot of things that are grown in a certain way just so they can be chewed up, mutilated, processed beyond belief to be able to make super cheap into something that's going to do no good in your body. Simply because it may taste good for about five seconds. So understanding what's a nutrition label, understand what your body needs, hugely important when it comes to you having a nutritionally healthy body for a long time, for a long time, because that's, that's the goal. How long can you live? How long can you impact other people's lives? And how healthy can you be doing both of those things? Thanks for checking out the All in Health and Wellness Confidence Through Health podcast. Our goal is to use health as a conduit to help you reach your goals in life. I think I like it deep inside, I feel the fire in me. She like the milky, steamy cream into the coffee in me. She got soul in a sway.